I, I've been teasing this all week long. I've been saying that there's an announcement coming that might make you go, holy cow, I never saw that one coming. Uh, well, it, it's here. There's a man in studio with me right now, um, and I'll let him say exactly what's going on, but you're going to recognize the voice uh, because oftentimes Al Carlson guests hosts for me right here on the News and Views Radio Network. Al, how you been? You know, life has been good. Just can't stay out of it, can you? Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> you know, Joel, there are things in life that get in your blood, and one yeah. of them is public service. And and I don't think many people saw this coming. No. Uh, and and But my wife and I had a long discussion about we've lived in Fargo our whole life. You know, basically from college on, and we've fought many floods, built many buildings, uh, raised our family here. And this town's pretty important to us. And you're going to run and for And I'm going to run for the city commission. I never saw that coming, Al. I didn't. I mean, obviously, we talk, and, I, you know, I was picking around the edges of it, and you just kept saying, well, let's wait and see, you know. But, yeah, I mean, to, to get after all those years of public service going to Bismarck to say I want to be on the city commission, I didn't see it coming. You know what? I, I've dealt with the city in many ways as a contractor for the last 40 years. And uh, I've watched this town grow from 50,000 people to 140,000 people. And I was part of that. I was fortunate enough to be a builder, to build houses and to condos and twin homes and, and hotels and dental offices and all those things that helped grow the Fargo city itself and the Fargo tax base. And I'm, I'm concerned that we make sure that the, the future of Fargo is as bright as the years that I was able to build all those things in it. Now, one thing that I also have, Joel, is that I didn't have before is that I'm not building anymore, and I have the time to devote the energy and the and I have the the passion to make this city even better. So uh, I'm looking forward to this as a challenge. Uh, the, the, what, from You were a legislative candidate, as I was. Best thing about this race is it's only 60 days long. Yeah, I was thinking of that, <laughs> yeah. how sweet that is. Well, that, you know, you're not starting now and going all the way through November. What the, you're doing no- is you're condensing it into, into a 60-day time frame. You try and get out your message uh, – and you know, like anything, it's your name, your name, your name. You can talk issues to your blue in the face, and a lot of times they just kind of glaze over eyeballs. But there are Fargo has got many opportunities in front of it, and uh, I, I'm I'm looking forward to being part of it. And here's the other part: there aren't a lot of parades between now and that city election. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I've never was quite that good at at this. Parade, a hand wave, parade. and tossing out candy. But Queen Elizabeth, if, if, if I had to do it, I I could do it. Yep. But the point is, people need to know what they're getting when they vote uh, for their commissioners, because those five people uh, determine the future of this city and and what direction it's going, and what the taxes will be, and what the pl- programs will be, and what the policies will be. And they have an important job, those five people. So what changes? I mean, if you win this race, if you find yourself as one of those five people. What changes? What what do you do different than what the current city commission is doing now? Well, I think that uh, I I was I was always known as a budget guy. You know, in the legislature, I was on the tax committee and I was and I was the leader and I ran. I was on the appropriations committee. I'm a numbers guy. I want to make sure that the people are getting the best bang for their buck. Now, you and I both probably just received our little letters that said our assessments have changed on our houses. And if there's any tax that the people like the least, it's the property tax. And I think that we need to take, even though the city's a small part of the big picture on the property tax, everybody needs to do their part to make sure that that housing stays affordable in the city of Fargo, that that there, our home ownership grows and those type of things. So I'll bring a, a an attitude of, of I, I'll go meet with all, I would go meet with all the department heads. I'd act, look at their, at their departments, how they function. I think I know a lot about things like that, um, and I and I think I can bring some expertise to how do we make government more efficient. Well, you know, Fargo, you mentioned, w- went from 50,000 people to 140,000 people right in front of your and my eyes. You know, I remember when King Leo's was down south, almost out of Fargo. Uh, you look at this thing now, and, uh, you know, you're becoming a long, narrow city. Uh, and sometimes building infrastructure for a long, narrow city is a real challenge, especially when you're in the bottom of a lake bed and there isn't that much elevation difference from the north to the south where you're trying to take your your raw water, where you're trying to take your wastewater, where you're, I mean, numbers involve infrastructure. Uh, that, that's a big part of what, to me, cities don't talk about enough, the curb, the gutter. How do you fix 
that? How do you utilize the ground that you have left to build this city in? Well, I think the, the part of it has been, and the big fight has been over the recent years, is that uh, whether you have a diversion or not have a diversion, and are you protecting one call, one group calls it a dam, other group calls it a diversion. Uh, but the point is you need to protect those 140,000 people living within the city limits. It's hard not to be long and narrow in Fargo. We have the interstate in the way. We have, and going north, you have the airport, and you have the Red River cutting back. Uh, so it isn't like there were a lot of options saying in West Fargo, which has grown a great deal to our west, uh, it has kind of limited the direction Fargo can go. Now, this is still North Dakota. People like a yard. They like a little room. They like a little space. They don't all want to live downtown in a high rise. And, and God bless them for that. This is North Dakota. So we need to make accommodations of how we effectively grow our city and making sure those services can be provided. It, does it cost money? Yes, it does. Are special assessments a problem? Yes, they are. As a contractor, I can tell you they're, they're becoming a real inhibitor for people building new homes. And we need to address that. They, they had a study on it. I, I don't think they quite solved the problem. And that needs to be one of the things addressed. That and making sure that, uh, uh, for example, I'll give you my house on real estate taxes. I just was assessed up $55,000 in one year. If you figure that out times current mill levies, that's a $730 increase per year. And I'm not the only guy that got those. Most of the South and North Fargo got them. So if people look at that statement and say, what did I get for that extra $737? The answer is don't raise your mills, lower your mills, and live within the budget you have. And uh, I hope that we can keep the budget in line so housing becomes more affordable. That, to me, would be a really big thing. Well, and, and I want to talk about that because, as you pointed out, uh, the city's portion of those mills is a very small portion in relation to property taxes. But the relationship with the school district and what happens with Fargo Public Schools is one that I want to get your take on. I want to find out how the city of Fargo can coordinate with them. If you're going to work on property taxes, you're going to have to work with the school district. So stick around. Uh, Al Carlson, now candidate for the Fargo City Commission. By the way, do you have a Facebook page or a website? Well, or that's all coming. Is it? Yeah, you know what? You're the first one to know today. I, I like that. A lot of people said, why would you go to Joel first? I said, because a simple thing, Joel's my friend, and I'm going to go tell him, let him well, Make the announcement thank you with for me. that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Want want to talk to you about the relationship that that the different political subdivisions have together to to deal with things like property taxes. Because when you said property taxes, you got my attention. That's something you and I used to work on together in the legislature. So, to, to talk to me about the relationship that the city commission has with the school district and others. Yeah. When you look at the list and I just happen to have that cause I'm kind of a tax guy, the city, the County, the park, the school. And then there's this category called other, which is a lot of little different thing, drains and stuff like that. But those are the big ones. Those are the ones there are four of them of, of this is a, a little two year old number, but the mills for the city was 53. The County was 49. The park was 28, which was higher than I thought it would be. And the school was 194. Now you got to remember the school has uh, more money has been interjected because of the state contribution to that over the years. And theirs has gone down, but all four of those need to be at the table when the budget's prepared. Cause right now the way the budget's done is everybody figures out how much they money they need and they turn it into the, the, uh, the uh, County auditor. And he adds up all the numbers of these people. And they said, well, we're in order to cover this, we're going to need, you know, 534 mills. Wow. And then people say, what in the world's a mill? You know, right. I, we got to get to also to the stage where mills go away as far as discussion with the taxpayer and talk about percentages. The budget needs to go up 2% in order to maintain all the services we have. Mm -hmm. Or the budget can go down 2% because we have paid off some bonds and we don't need it or whatever it happens to be. So you need to talk in a language that people understand because I, I have a definition of a, I could give you a five-page sheet that talks about what a mill is and how the percentages are down to actually the taxable value. And it gets to be really something. Well, so, people think but, a mill it, is a mill. Yeah. A mill in Richland County is different than a mill in Cass County. Oh, there's County. a lot more. In right. it, but but you need to get – all these groups need to be together and say, you know what, we need to make sure that we as a group control this this growth of our, our city taxes because uh, if a renter in an apartment building thinks that increasing taxes doesn't affect them, they're wrong because if that landlord pays more money, he raises his rent. You know, So everybody's part of this whole game, and you really need to work – 
hard on this. They'll they'll tell you they have. I think we need to work harder on getting this in line. You know, there's a couple other things, Joel, that are that are important to me as I uh, as I've watched this city grow. And public safety is another one. Public safety, whether it be the fire department, the police department, uh, the EMT people that we have around town, uh, this is not the same Fargo that it was 20 years ago. You know, you listen to the news that your people put out and there's stabbings and there's shootings and there's fires and, and there's homelessness. There's all kinds of issues that need to be addressed and we need to make sure that our public safety people are properly funded. You know, if we need 12 officers on the street at night driving our streets instead of five, then it's up to the city commission to make sure how do we get those people so this city is safe. Because the people expect only several things from from the city. They want the infrastructure to work. They want their, their uh, water and sewer to work. They want the street lights to be on. And they want to make sure that when their kids are going somewhere, they're safe. And whether it be in the schools or whatever. And we need to up our game on that. Because that problem's not going to get less as we get bigger. It's going to get more. And we need to make sure we keep investing properly in public safety. And infrastructure always have to be. Either pay me now or you pay me later. I'm, I mean, those are the kind of things that are important to me. There's lots of issues they deal with. You know, they deal with all kinds of tax exemptions. And they deal with all sorts of things. Those need to be weighed out one at a time. And, and done on, based upon their merit. And those are the things that a commissioner has to decide as he gets the facts. What about, uh, you know, and I've raised this question with everyone that ever runs for office in this town. But what about things like uh, the Renaissance Zone? You know, there's such a focus on downtown Fargo. Uh, as a city commissioner, will there be certain areas of your city that you say, look, uh, this is where our focus needs to be? Or where, will there be a broader stroke when it comes to that? You know, I, I think that if you look at Fargo and you look at the 5th uh, Avenue North, the 5th Avenue uh, South, you look at those two, those houses are in many cases 140 years old. And there's a point in time where you have to address how are you going to make that uh, affordable for, or what are you going to do with those houses if they're not salvageable? And the city is doing some plans. They have some redo plans and some loans and things that are available. But if you, that's part of your urban sprawl you talked about is how do you, get neighborhoods where the people want to move into mm -hmm. on the inner city. And that that's an issue that I'd have to study some more, but I think that's, that's real viable is how do you deal with those, that inner city part and how do you revitalize that uh, to a more modern approach to uh, housing for people so that they can afford to be there? Well, you're going to make it interesting. I'll tell you that. Well, you, you know, up for a debate if we line one up with you guys, you know, I, I don't know how you handle 12 people, but uh, I guess you, I'd be glad to everybody gets 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, you make it work. That's what you do. Al, thanks for coming here and doing this. You Appreciate bet. it. Not a problem. Al Carlson, candidate for the Fargo City Commission.